Fish! Man, fish is great for you, especially wild-caught Pacific salmon. Eat that at least once a week and mmm, all sorts of healthy goodness. And interestingly, salmon have a super unique biology, because generally speaking, fish can be either salt water or fresh water, and if you put one type of fish into the other type of water, well, you get a very dead fish. Sometimes it's pretty morbid too. But why is that? And what is the actual difference? Well, let's find out. What really is the big deal when it comes to salt water or fresh water? And I mean, who cares? Because you shouldn't even be able to get oxygen from the water. That's so much more work, so inefficient. Why are fish so stupid? So getting right into it, fish actually don't breathe. I mean, in the traditional sense. In fact, what they do instead has a bunch of its own fancy terminology, and it basically means how a fish regulates its body fluids. I mean, after all, if you breathe fluids, everything inside of you at that point is pretty much fluids. So this fishy process is called osmoregulation, and really, almost all living organisms do this process. For humans and most land creatures, it's basically the process of intaking liquids and then losing it through various means, most likely peeing and all the stuff in between. That's why, like, if you're working out and sweating a bunch, you don't have to pee as much. It's because you're sweating it all out. You're sweating out your pee. It's not the most scientifically accurate way of putting it, but it's the way I like saying it. And this process is a lot more difficult to explain in fish than you'd think, but it's the main difference between freshwater and saltwater animals. So we kind of have to. But first, let's describe the difference between the two waters. Saltwater is just pretty much normal water, whereas freshwater is the special one. In fact, freshwater is only about 10% of the total water on the planet. So fresh water is definitely the special one. The salt content or salinity of salt water is about 3.5%, whereas fresh water only has a salinity of 0.1%, meaning for every liter of ocean water, there is 35 grams of salt diluted into it. Whereas fresh lake or river water only has one gram of salt. So yes, fresh water does technically have salt, but a lot, lot less. Let's talk freshwater first, as it's a lot easier for the baseline explanation, as salt just adds complications. Freshwater fish are able to live in fresh water and are also normally hardier than their salty counterparts, as their habitats are smaller, so they can get a lot hotter and a lot colder easier. The ocean is a great temperature regulator, whereas lakes get steamy or frozen over all the time. And fish gotta live through that. Also, freshwater fish have more land-based predators than salty ocean fish, for obvious reasons. And along with being hardier, they also have a much higher salt content inside of their bodies than the surrounding water, which is very important information. Now, let's quickly go over osmosis, as it's half of the name in osmoregulation, after all. Osmosis is a common word in science, and it comes from Greek, meaning to move or transport. In microbiology, it describes the actions of cells as they transfer, mostly liquids, through a semi-permeable membrane, which occurs because there is a pressure difference on both sides of the wall. For example, if we have 10 molecules on one side and two on the other, the molecules are going to want to be equal, so four of them will pass through the wall via osmosis, so there's six on both sides now. And this is where our fish comes into play. You see, if a fish has a high amount of salt in it and lives in a low salt environment, eh? You see where I'm going? The fish then needs to stop its body from losing all of its salt because living things need salt. It's super important for a wide variety of bodily functions in all life forms, pretty much. Many more terrible things happen if you're low on salt than if you're high on salt. We know now that at least in humans, not having enough salt is significantly more detrimental than having too much salt. And in fish, it is definitely a matter of life and death. This is where our freshwater fish become different from saltwater fish because freshwater fish are normally saltier inside than the water they're swimming in. Thus, all that water wants to flow in, flushing the salt out. Balance is key. But the problem is, if that were to happen, the fish would die. This kills the fish. However, fret not, young ones, for the fish has many ways to combat this. To start, freshwater fish tend to not drink much water. And yes, fish do drink water. Fun facts. And they don't need to drink much water because their body already absorbs so much of it. But even so, they still produce copious amounts 
of urine. And you thought swimming in a public pool was bad. Ha! Try a lake, or a fish tank for that matter. The goldfish in your aquarium may be producing a third of its body weight in urine every single day. Now you know why you need to filter your fish. A filter for your fish. Don't filter your fish. This kills the fish. Now, there is another problem with producing so much urine, and the same applies to humans, so listen up. Peeing too much means necessary minerals and nutrients, as well as waste products, are lost. It's called hyponatremia. Long story short, you drink too much water, and it washes out all of your necessary minerals and electrolytes through pee and sweat. Eight glasses a day, they say. Nah, just stay hydrated, but not overly hydrated. You shouldn't have to force yourself to drink because it's healthy. That seems difficult when you're a fish, though. But by ingesting food and absorbing necessary salts in places such as the gills, fish actively take in enough of these minerals and electrolytes to replace what's lost in its urine. So their gills are specially made to absorb ions in the water, too. Now on the flip side, like flipping a fish in a pan, Saltwater fish are the opposite in almost every way. They exhale ions through their gills and drink loads of water constantly. They also lose water through their skin instead of absorbing it. And they pee extremely concentrated urine. Pretty much only waste products are expelled from their body. In fact, the only reason they produce so much urea is because their kidneys are huge compared to the rest of their body. Plus, they have a large intake of ammonia from their salty alkaline water. Ammonia is a very deadly substance in large quantities, but through filtration in the fish kidneys, they are able to turn it into urea quick enough to skip this harmful stage. Urea, by the way, is much less dangerous of a chemical in the body and is part of what makes urine urine if you couldn't gather that from the name. And the only reason saltwater fish produce so much urea is because they have to. I mean, most vertebrates can easily release the regular amount of ammonia from their body, but saltwater fish intake ammonia at such an insane level that they would literally die just by storing a relatively regular amount of it. So they need to convert it to super concentrated urea first and get it out ASAP. And this fact, along with their gills acting slightly differently with the water, allows them to live in high saline environments. Their lives are saved thanks to pee. But now here comes the fun part. What would happen if you put the saltwater fish in fresh water and the freshwater fish in salt water? I mean, first of all, they die before like anything super terrible happens, just because that's how fish do. But for some specifics, the saltwater fish would just balloon up, as it's not really great at expelling water, whereas the freshwater fish would shrivel up into a tiny little raisin fish. Meet the urahaline, an organism able to live in both salt and fresh water. And they're commonly found in tide pools, small bodies of water that change salinity with the tides. Think crabs, small clams, and barnacles, maybe an octopus or two, possibly sea stars, those kind of things, or salmon. Though they are a special case because they live in both bodies of water but don't really change daily like the tides. Rather, they migrate from fresh water to salt and then to fresh again, different periods of life rather than constantly changing. Gosh, I do love salmon. Easily the tastiest fish. And I know a ton about them because I grew up near a major salmon hatchery, so that's like the only biology-related thing that I learned in elementary school. So, so much salmon. Wish I could have learned something else for like a month. Another thing I learned in elementary school is that there are no saltwater amphibians. And ha, ha, I say to you, those were but lies. <laughs> but lies, for there is one. It's the crab-eating frog. However, it's only able to live in up to 2.9 salinity water, so it's on the lower end of salt water. Perfect for hunting in tide pools then, where crabs live, hence the name. And the only reason it's able to live in this type of water is thanks to its stinking massive kidneys that are able to produce enough urea, much like saltwater fish. So that's that then. It's all because of the kidneys. Huh. That's the difference between salt and freshwater fish. I still can't get over the visual of one ballooning and then the other shriveling up when you swap their environments with each other. <laughs> Morbid. Well, until next time, never stop improving and I'll see you on the next lesson. Hopefully, hope we didn't scare you away with fish knowledge. <laughs>